I was just like, I did not have space for anyone's opinion about my life at that time because it would really break me and I did not have the space or mental capacity to handle anything other than just being present in the moment and breathing. That's all I could take time for and I know Hey girls, welcome back to my channel. Before I continue, I want to read a message that did this. Beautiful rage, we love you. Don't get discouraged. You've opened up your life to save. You've opened up your life to us and I've learned I've learned from you to love, not to take life so seriously, to be happy, to follow your dreams. Please continue on. Continue putting on a smile on our faces. Hello, Henrik. We miss you. We miss you guys, your friends. This is from Kai. Thank you very much. I know. Let me start by saying this. I am really, really sorry. I am really sorry. About three months ago, that's when I put up my last video. I was so excited. I was running around. I was literally... <laughs> On top of my world, like I was having all these opportunities and sometimes like, wow, what did I do to deserve that, you know? I was having a good time and I was enjoying it and I just like, I was literally on top of things and I was happy and I was sharing and I was drinking champagne. Life was good. But then, things did not stay like that for so long. So basically, in this video, I'm going to tell you guys what happened, why I took a haters, where I've been basically the tea that's what i'm here to give you so it's going to be a little bit of a story time of what's been going on or a life update or whatever so grab your tea grab your coffee grab your champagne whatever floats your boat because it's about to roll <laughs> no this is a little bit of a of a video <laughs> about three months ago i took a break but let me break down to you what what ha 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 what ha ha happened? If you don't know me, probably you're new from this channel. First subscribe. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm extra. Nice to meet you. Subscribe. Okay, thanks. So if you don't know me, guys, um, or if you're new to this channel, or if you're still here, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I came to Sweden as an au pair, but then I changed my permission to a residence permit. And then I met Henrik and I tried to change that into a couple a visa. Okay? But that's where things got a little bit complicated because in Sweden, it's like when you come here for the reason that you come, you should stick to it. Otherwise, your life becomes a little bit complicated. And that's exactly what happened to me. So for the longest time, I was not able to go anywhere. I was basically landlocked. I couldn't go anywhere. And it's because... I sent my permission, I sent my papers to the immigration for them to uh, prolong it and give me a spouse visa basically. So before you get into the nitty gritty of that, in Sweden there's something called Sambo and Sambo is basically a spouse and it means you and your husband, or you know, you and your partner live together. So living together and being married are kind of treated the same way, although they're two different things. So with that said, Henrik and I applied for our sambo visa or our partner's visa about two years ago and it took a while for them to process this and that's why most times henry could travel and be like oh rachel why don't you henry why don't you bring rachel with you what's wrong blah blah why don't you rest? it was because a girl was illegal I, I i could not go anywhere basically it's like it's ru <laughs> it has ruled my entire life like for the longest time i've always been looking so much forward to this day when we then make the decision i'll travel the world with my love i will go there explore everything because when henrik and i met we were everywhere we were running like i don't know like we could barely sit down we were everywhere and it's like all of a sudden i couldn't go nowhere and he had to travel by himself anyway so eventually i got my I got a letter from immigration inviting me and Henry to go for to go for an interview and basically this is the interview where they get to weigh whether or not your your relationship is legitimate whether you guys live together whatever they get to know all that through this interview so we got the letter and Henry was supposed to go out for work uh, he had a work travel like I told you guys he travels a lot he's well here I'm lonely <laughs> hi anyway we finally got the chance to go for the interview and I remember the day that that morning that was supposed to go for an interview I was just like I, I woke up with this feeling 
you know this feeling in my stomach i'm just like oh my god um this is gonna mean so much to me and i remember sitting down and putting my head on hendrix just like Oh babe, I remember this day, I hope I'll calm down because for the longest time since the time I got this letter until the time I got the chance to go for this interview, I was nervous. Every single day I woke up nervous and I could not help it. I, I didn't have the appetite to eat. I, I, I was just looking forward to this interview and then this was like, okay, finally I'm here. But then when I went for the interview, things went really south because I've done an immigration interview before and normally it take about 10, 15 minutes or maybe 20 minutes, it never goes far. But this time my interview went for so long and I was surprised that they had even watched our YouTube videos and I was like, okay, <laughs> the things you put online, you just have to, I don't know, but yes, the people that were interviewing us had watched some of our YouTube videos, had read my blog, had all that stuff, and I was just like, wow, yeah, that's one. And another thing is they interviewed us for so long that I got a bad feeling in my stomach. What made me feel a little bit weird was that they did not just ask me questions to do with my stay with Henrik. They asked me like really tricky questions that I was not necessarily expecting or prepared for and it left me feeling kind of like oh my god and that's when I got really really anxious that if things don't go right my life would be we get into that so Henry goes for the interview as well and they ask him as many questions and finally we went back home and I remember this time when I was waiting for my decision to be made I was in such an awkward situation like I, would, I had so much anxiety that the only focus I could have was to breathe literally breathe because I was struggling so much to even just breathe and I remember like at that time the last thing I wanted to wake up and do is pick up a camera and film all I wanted to do was just be with Henrik be close because it actually hit me that there's a chance I might be taken back home and either because my permission has been denied or I have to reapply again or just I've been you know kicked out and they tell you during the interview that when you if your decision has been declined you need a particular time like I don't know if it's two years I don't know if it's five years you have to be out of the European Union or the Schengen region for quite some time and that time I was really worried that if that's the case then that means I won't have time with Henrik and I won't be able to finish my education which I'm supposed to do in a short while I'm supposed to be graduating so I was like so much was at stake that when every time I could think about it I could not relax I was just like I was in so much panic that I could not do anything else than either just breathe hold Henrik pick myself, take myself to school and I remember the times when I had exams and luckily somehow I managed to school A's but I was like how do I manage to do this because I was in so much pressure and of course I'm so thankful to, Hen to Henrik for always being so supportive I'm so thankful of course to Debbie and over all the time I could call my mom and be like well, please pray for me because I was losing my mind you know and of course I felt relief every time I spent time with these people or when I took talk to my mom over the phone or when she prayed for me or when I was with Henrik at home it it made me feel calm but other times I was just so anxious that I could not breathe properly breathe in and out and all I could think about was that okay what if I have to go back and it sucks because I know back at home I have so much support and whatever happened I, it would be okay like I would go back home my family is there and things will turn out all right anyway but the thought of starting all over again after everything that i went through probably this is what made me anxious i went through so much when i came to sweden i've shared my story with you what happened you can check how i came to sweden all that and the thought that all these things did not mean anything and now i have to start all over again that it was that is what gave me anxiety and every single day I was just like, Lord Jesus, please let this be the day when I get my decision. And yes, well, I remember what the, one day I came back home. Henrik and I just went to buy pizza from Pizza Hut. It was a Tuesday. It was a crazy Tuesday. 
and we're just like okay let's go have pizza sit home watch netflix because we could just do what was possible to distract me or to make me feel normal at that moment when defining moments in your life happen you really get to prioritize and you really get to see what's important to you and where your priorities are and who is important in your life and that those that time of my life i really got to to, to prioritize and know what really means so much to me and what I'm willing to let go and what means nothing in my life because those are the only things that revolved around my head during this process. Anyway, I remember, so we come from Pizza, pizza Hut with our pizza, going to, you know, comfort food to make me feel, you know, just good at that moment. So Henrik opens the, what do you call it? He opens the mailbox and I just see him turn red because you know if you live with a caucasian you know they can't lie if something is off you see it's right first of all if they lie to you you you'll tell if something is off you will tell if they're up to something like maybe they're trying to hide something from you you will tell. like i i know my boyfriend in and out like he can't say anything like if he says something that is truthful i know by just looking at him if he's trying to hide something from me i know by just looking at him so he opens this and takes out this letter and I see him being like, and that time he's like, I'm like, okay, let me see, what is this? I pick it and like, from immigration and I was like, oh, oh my God, okay. So I look at the lift, trying to press the lift to open as much as possible so I can get in and I don't know, sit down and read this letter because I was, I was overwhelmed by everything. And when this letter came and I was just like, oh my God, whatever this is, this is it. So I, I reach home, Henrik puts me down, oh, he, and I'm like, oh, please open and tell me, is it a yes or a no? Am I staying or am I leaving? Like, just tell me, what, what is it? So he opens it, and then he's like, okay, yes, who? Luckily, we thank the Lord, I got granted my permission, and it's so funny, I was expecting, like, when I get this decision, I would jump up, I would be so excited, but it's like, when I got it, it was so real that I could not, I was numb. And I'm like, okay, um, I've been waiting for this all this time. I've been anxious. I've been all this. And now I got this. What do I do? So, of course, the first thing I thought was just to thank God for protecting me through all these mental breakdowns that I was going through on a daily basis. All the anxiety, seeing me through everything. And just keeping my, my little heart together because I don't know what, what worse could have happened. Anyway, shortly after Shelly was getting married, so I went to her wedding and immediately from the wedding that the night before, the night, the morning after, I just went straight to the airport, checked the flight, picked a destination and went and just flew out of the country because I just wanted to have that, you know, Rachel, it's real. Like, it's, this is it. You have your permission. It's okay. Because that's how much damaged I was. So I picked my... I picked my flight, I flew away, and I remember sitting on that flight and being like, thank you Lord. And personally, I'm so scared of flying, by the way. I'm not one of those people that get so excited when they're in a flight. I freak out. So I was in this flight, and the only thing I could think of was, oh my God, this could have been the flight that is taking me back home for a very long time. Because once your permission has been denied, you have to stay out of the Schengen region for quite some time. And all I could think, I just had so much appreciation, and I was just like bawling, because finally, it it dawned to me that everything was okay, I had my permission and it was fine. So I check into my hotel room and the whole time I just thanked God, I was just like praying and I was just being so grateful. And yes, it, it dawned to me that yeah, I had my permission and everything was okay. And then I came back and I remember when I was in that hotel room, that's when I got this message from one of you lovely people, she's called Karin and Karin was just telling me not to give up, that she looks up to me for and thanking me for putting my life out there i think with all my craziness she she sees that i don't uh, everything that she said was so sweet and i was like oh my god when i come back i'll turn on the camera it doesn't matter how dark it is outside because now i just came back from school actually yeah and i was like i'll turn on this camera and first of all thank you guys who've been there if you're still here i am so grateful for you i appreciate you so much and you guys mean a lot to me and also 
for those who are just coming in now or probably those who have so much questions to do with immigration because I guess that's what I titled this if you have any questions to do with immigration you can ask me down below I'll do a Q&A on immigration or anything you want to know about my life down there so you can go ahead and ask me because I've had so many questions to do with immigration but I could not necessarily answer the questions because I'm like how do I answer you when personally my life is not even that together I don't know anything but now I've gathered all the tea I've gathered the information I guess I am um, it's okay to ask me immigration questions because now I know what to tell you if you have to first if you have to change your permission if you're coming as a spouse if you're coming for work or if your situation is just different and you wonder what to do so now i think i've gathered enough immigration information to probably answer your question so you can go ahead and ask me that but i would say that i am sorry i took such a long time to come back and talk to you guys but i must say that sometimes you go through certain situations especially when it's like life-changing situations you really get to prioritize and you get to put so much into perspective and as much as you guys are so important to me i was just like i did not have space for anyone's opinion about my life at that time because it would really break me and i did not have the space or mental capacity to handle anything other than just being present in the moment and breathing that's all i could take time for and i know you take a video put it out there you open your life for anything so no I'm not pregnant, I'm okay, Eric and I are very much together, things are fine at home, and I'm well. So now, I, hopefully, from now onwards, I know I'll, I'll be traveling a lot, for sure, and I'll try my best to bring you guys along. School is here, and yeah, so I'll keep, um, I'll keep doing what I've been doing, and know that I love you guys so much, and I appreciate every single one of you that stayed. Until next time, my lovely girls, adios, I love you, bye.